Last week, as some of you know, my 85-year-old dad died. My dad breathed his last breath. And even though my dad lived 85 years on this planet, um, full disclosure, I wasn't completely prepared for, for his passing. Um, and so my dad's death has left a bit of a mark on me. My, my heart and my mind has been flooded with emotions and, and, and memories of my time with my dad here on, on, this, on this earth. And well, years ago, uh, my parents asked me to serve as the trustee for their financial estate. And so since my dad's death, uh, I've been you know, kind of working through various documents. My mom and I have gotten together to look through my dad's personal belongings. And among his sort of life treasures, one of the things is, you know, as we've been preparing for his burial, one of the things that we uncovered, it was this little Bible uh, that my dad carried with him when he would visit people in their homes and, and visit them at the hospital and, and do counseling. And I, I, would, I can, it's probably safe for me to say that my dad even had this with him when he would be down at the local uh, coffee house and some of the farm, farm communities that he served as he was you know, interacting with the farmers and just catching up on the local uh, town gossip. <clears throat> The next day, I opened this up and, and, and I looked closer. I realized that within the inside of this, this Bible, where this little pocket Bible where this bookmark was, my dad had ink scratched a, a couple of a Bible verses. 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. For those of you who are familiar with this Bible passage and these two Bible verses, you know that they were written by an, one of the early church leaders, a guy by the, by the name of the Apostle Paul, who was really an early Christian in, during the days of Jesus. And if you know Paul's story, you know that Paul didn't really have a very good start in his relationship with Jesus. In fact, uh, he kind of had a rough start. Paul had a little bit of baggage in his life. And, and that's really good news for you and for me because who of us don't have a little bit of baggage in our life? And yet still, God chose to work through him and work in him. When I, when I think about my dad's life, if there's one thing that would, I think, really describe him was he loved to work. Uh, my dad had an incredible work ethic. And, you know, he came from the builder generation and, and, and many of the churches that he served, uh, he was always building something. There was some kind of building project. Because if you know my mom and dad, you know how they love education. They love to, you know, invest in, in, in both teachers and students. And so that they were always putting their time and energy to try to share the love of Jesus within that educational arena. You know, after graduating from college with a degree in biochemistry, my dad served for a season uh, with the United States Army. Well, following his uh, honorable discharge and then uh, as a result of a prison ministry that, that he had been involved with, 
My dad felt the call to go of God's life to serve him in, in, in full-time uh, pastoral ministry. And so my dad left the army. He went back, to, went back to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, kind of his hometown area, where he, enlist, he enrolled, if you will, uh, in seminary. And so my mom worked full-time to put my, my dad through school. <clears throat> Well, after graduating from a seminary, my, my parents, they started their 40-year their ministry tour and, and, and they put into practice this other Bible verse that my dad referenced in, in the back of his Bible. 1 Corinthians 9.19 For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. You know, my dad wasn't always home. <clears throat> and sadly, you know, I think too often, and, and, and my dad made his work ministry maybe a higher priority than, than his family ministry, a higher priority than us, uh, us as kids. You know, and I, and, and I share that with you, not to try to put a stain on my dad's legacy, but to recognize this tension that every parent feels that every pastor feels really in ministry is how do I serve the people and yet how do I not neglect my own my own family was playing softball I was in a men's softball league because like my dad I love baseball too and uh, on this particular night I can remember um, we were short a player and and in this league that I played they allowed you to have subs well my, my dad showed up uh, uh, to the game he was still you know in his you know pastoral garb so to speak he was wearing a pair of dress slacks and he had his uh, patented leather hush puppy loafers that he always uh, loved to wear and we said dad you know we need we need a um we need a player and now realize i have i'd never really seen my dad play probably in 10 years i knew he could throw the ball because we would we would um we would play catch. In fact, I have his glove right here. Let me grab it. This glove is like 60 years old and I used to give him grief because there's just no, there's, all it is is like this piece of leather uh, on, on, uh, on this little old glove. It, it, it's crazy. I, I don't know how you would catch it. it. It would hurt my hand so much. But, but anyways, my dad shows up to this game. We said, dad, we, we need a player. You, you got to help us. And so my dad reluctantly, um, decides to, to play and and uh, so he, he you know he's at the bottom of the order he, he's um, really not um, you know doesn't really want to do much but well the time eventually comes when my dad's got to swing the bat and and I'm thinking to myself okay this is gonna be good so he gets up to the plate dress slacks hush puppies he's taking off his dress shirt so he's wearing his JC Penney's you know white t-shirt you know short t-shirt that that all the people all the guys wore back in the 50s you know the look Gets up to the plate, pitch comes, first swing, first pitch, he he takes a swing and immediately sends it on a rope, takes a, it's a shot over the left field fence, uh, AKA Kirk Gibson for those of you Dodgers fans. Now my dad didn't, wasn't doing the fist pump, but he could have as he, as he made the round, the round of the bases home run. I'm like, what, are you kidding me? My dad came up to the plate two more times <clears throat> after that. Anybody want to guess what he did? Same, same behavior, same result. One swing, home run over the left field fence on a shot. My dad came in. I'm like, Dad, dude, you got to play. That was the last time. I think I saw my dad play one more time after that. The guy could play. The guy had skills. The guy loved baseball. But it wasn't his calling. His calling was to love people. 
His calling was to pour his life and to serve people so that people might experience the love of Jesus and, and the, the recalibration, of, if you will, of Jesus in their life. Well, after retiring after their 40-year ministry gig, my, my dad began to sort of, I think, recalibrate sort of the priorities of, of his life. And, and that happens to a lot of us, does it not? I mean, who, who, who of us can, can honestly say that, that, that we haven't made a mistake in our life? And, and as my dad got older, family became, maybe because of time and whatever, but it just became more, more important to him. And I, and I share all of this with you uh, to set up really the context for, for my, my, my final story. You know, the day before my dad died, my mom called me. At this time, my, by this time, my dad was, uh, the last couple uh, of years, he's been in a, a home, a, a, a villa, if you will, where he could get 24-hour care. It was more than my mom could, could kind of provide. My dad had had a, a leg amputation a few years ago, and so it was hard for him to get around. And, and, and regardless, he's now in this home. He's getting his 24-hour care, and my mom calls me. She says, Michael, uh, I just got a call from the villa. Your dad's not doing very well. She said, you wanna, you wanna meet me? And they, they told us we could come in and see him. You know, everything's on COVID lockdown right now. And, and she said, you wanna come in? And you know what my response was? I said, Mom, I'm busy. It's the whole Cat Stevens, Cats in the Cradle song, right? Well, Mom, I'm busy. I got an important business meeting tonight. You know, it's the beginning of the, of the year, 2021. I, I, got, I got meetings I need to take care of. I said, you go, I, I just saw dad, you know, I'm, I'm okay. And as I hung up the, as we hung up the phone, you know, I thought, what am I thinking? You know, what am I thinking? I leave, I leave my office all the time. I leave my home all the time to go visit people, just like my dad with his little pocket ministry Bible to be with people in time of crisis. What am I thinking? So I called her up and I said, Mom, Mom, Mom I'll meet you there. I sent out a quick text to all my board members and the people I was going to meet with. I said, I, can't, I, can't, I got to cancel tonight's meeting. We'll reschedule. I'll catch up with you. And, and so I jumped in the car and, and I drove up to the, to the villa where my mom was there. And we, we, we went in to see my dad. As I was driving to the villa, I was thinking, if this is really it, if this is really the last time that I'm going to see my dad, what do I want to say to him? This might be the last time I have a chance to say something to him. What do I want to say to him? As we got into his room, um, you know, he, he didn't look so bad. Full disclosure, I thought, he, I don't know what everybody's uh, talking about. You know, he was sleeping and so we woke him up and, and as I went around his bed, and some of you know the story, have heard me share the story already. I grabbed his hand as he was in bed and, and I was surprised at how strong he was. I mean, the, the, I thought, wow, you know, he's, he doesn't feel weak uh, to, to me at all. I don't know what people are, are so concerned about it. But as I, I was holding his hand, um, my dad was kind of in and out. And then all of a sudden, he started, he started raising his hand toward, toward the ceiling. And I'm looking, you know, and I'm a pastor. I've been with people uh, many times when they have, they've died. That's just part of the, the gig. And, 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 but I'd never seen that before. So, you know, he's pointing kind of towards the, towards the ceiling. And I'm looking and I'm thinking, is, is this like, what's, Dad, what do you see? I say, Dad, what do you see? And in my head, I'm thinking, I'm like, is, is he see this great white light? You know, is Jesus coming for him? What does he see? And, and he kind of shakes his head and he, and he goes, you know, TV. And my mom says, oh, he wants the TV turned off. And so we had a, a, a funny moment there where we laughed. And so I unplugged the TV. It's like my dad didn't want to be distracted by anything. He wanted to spend time with, with his family. It was like he knew something that we didn't know. I just began to say thank you. I, I didn't really know, he was kind of in and out, and I didn't really know of, 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 of you know, kind of consciousness. Sometimes he was open his eyes, sometimes he would close them, but I thought, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna tell him, I don't know what's gonna stick, but I wanna, I wanna tell him thank you. I'm not gonna share the whole list of things that I shared, but the first thing I said was, Dad, thank you for in, in, in introducing me to Jesus. Thank you for the opportunity to, to just, to, 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 to take risks and to, and to to be a leader in my own different world. And, and it was at that moment that something really shifted in the room. I looked at my dad, he was wide eyed open and he was all there and, and then he said something. And I was pretty sure I heard what he, what he said, but then I looked over at my mom and I said, Mom, what did he say? And she said, Michael, 
I did the best that I could. I did the best that I could. I did the best that I could. So now Paul in his final instruction to, to Timothy, this young pastor, as well as to you and to me, you know, he, he's, he's comparing his life to that of a race. And Paul is saying, I've run the race, I, I, I've, I've given my best shot, I've stewarded this sort of this life baton the best that I can. But now he's saying, Timothy, it, it's your time to, to, to run because the, the, the time has arrived, Timothy, for me to to hang up my cleats, so to speak. He said, the time has come for me to graduate. And I, I kind of feel like <clears throat> maybe that was my dad's own little mantra as well. And so Paul was saying, you know, I've, I've, I'm holding my head high and I'm looking forward to that heavenly crown that, that awaits all of us, you and me, uh, every person who, who puts their faith in Jesus. Until that day arrives, I, I need to run. You need to run. We need to give our best effort steward well and there's a strong likelihood that we're gonna fail that's just part of the journey that's just part of life's experience but friends the good news of, of the Bible my dad's pocket ministry Bible is that with God's help we don't have to stay down we can get back up we can continue to swing the bat I fought a good fight I have finished my course I have kept the faith Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but to all of them also that love his appearing. And so until the Lord takes you home and takes you up, so to speak, you got to get to work. Who do you know who could benefit from the love of Jesus? Who do you know who could, could, who could, benefit from a phone call. Listen, if you haven't talked to your parents in a while or, or if you haven't talked to your kids in a while, I just want to encourage you to reach out to them even today as soon as this broadcast is over because we never know when that'll be the last time we get a chance to say thank you.